This is LS11. Good morning. Welcome along to LS11, your uh, obviously the place for Leeds United chat on a Tuesday morning. My name's Darren Harper, and joining us as ever, our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives, it is Ryan Wilson. Good morning. Good morning. Not just Tuesday morning, Darren, seven days a week if you listen to this on the podcast. So. We're, oh, not well, that's true. we're not just Tuesday morning, boys. <laughs> true, that's true. You confused me a little bit there. I'm like, what? Uh, but yes, if you are listening on the uh, podcast, it could be any day of the week. It doesn't really matter when you're listening to it, as long as you listen. That's the main thing. Um, a big thanks, of course, to Ben Parker, who's here as well, our former footballer. Good morning, mate. I thought I was getting um, accepted for an award then. I got, I got a bit carried away. <laughs> Um, uh, can I just have you got some sort of like uh, like what they call a gel on your light today? Because um, it looks like there's a little bit of mood lighting coming from Casa Parker. It's just what I bring to the show, Darren. Just that little bit of mood. I think we all need that, don't we? At moments, uh, just just trying to just trying to mix it up for everyone. <laughs> it's looking good. It's looking good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. How are we, boys? All right. I not bad. Thanks. Not bad. Yeah, a bit Everyone, it's tired dark, this dark and cold, you know, dark, cold winter. But Christmas is coming. Christmas is like the only shining light in the winter for me. I'm not, I'm not a winter boy. Me, I, I like, I like the summer. I like to be out and about. I like, I like getting sunburned. Festival. <laughs> Festivals, definitely. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Um, you, well, let's be fair. You must be lacking. You must be double dosing on your vitamin D tablets at the moment because uh, there's not much sun out there. For you, right. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. I, you know what? When, when, um. When I got that vitamin, well, when I when I got that vitamin D deficiency, is that the right way to say it? When I got <laughs> when I was vitamin D deficient, um, when were it January? So it were winter, wasn't it? They give me some like super strong tablets, like you like to take one every fortnight. They're that strong, um, but when it came to like like March, April, May, whenever it was, I stopped taking them because the sun were out, you know. And um, and actually, for the first time, I took one last week um, because I thought, you know what, I'm going to start. Topping up the old vitamin D, Ben. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you mean, mate. I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, mate. Uh, but uh, yes, we are very much looking forward to Christmas. There's no doubt about that. Um, big thanks, of course, to our sponsors on the LS11 podcast. Uh, our main sponsor, of course, in this Premier League season, a Premier League company, huge Leeds United fans, toughshop.co.uk. They create and produce premium branded work clothing and PPE. They will embroider, print or lo- your logo onto a range of products ready for you to use. Toughshop.co.uk have worked with some of the world's biggest brands, such as Snickers, not the chocolate bar, Devault and Black Lady. Uh, and if you need branded work clothing, you just call them on uh, Toughshop 0113 288 7713. They're based Based in Woodlesford in Leeds, but will deliver worldwide. Find out more on their website, toughshop.co.uk. Go to toughshop.co.uk for all your workwear needs. That's exactly where you need to go. This is LS11. And we are live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you want to get involved in the show, then all you need to do is pop a little comment uh, in uh, either Facebook or YouTube. And we'll get to it a little bit uh, later on. As it's Christmas coming up, have you watched any Christmas movies uh, just yet? Uh, Ryan, have you partaken yet? No. No. And normally we do. So maybe we probably will this weekend or so. But I like a Christmas film. I do Mm, enjoy it. Same here. Ben, have you have you uh, partaken of a bit of Love Actually uh, so far this season? No, not Love Actually, but The Holiday. What a film! I don't think I've ever seen that one. Is that oh, Cameron? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Get it, get it on, Darren. Pour have yourself a, a nice little mulled wine, and um, it's it's a bit of you that I reckon. A, a, a mulled wine, no, but um, Bailey's and a couple of ice cubes. Ooh, Ooh. nice, nice. Yeah, doing a little so, Bailey. Have you been watching any Christmas films, Darren? I mean, do, has Star Wars ever done a Christmas film? 
Yes, actually. Um, there is the Star Wars Holiday Special, which was very famously terrible, um, <laughs> that came out after the first film came out. And they've redone it this year on Disney Plus. Or Disney Lego have redone the Star Wars Holiday Special. So I have actually watched that, yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were expecting there to be no Christmas special. Yeah, that, that proper burnt me because I thought I were being really funny then, but <laughs> it just bit me on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but we have watched quite a lot of uh, okay. Christmas movies so far. There is a new one on Disney Plus called Noel, and it's right. really funny. It's really, really good. We watched it last weekend, and it's like it's excellent. So if you've got kids, but even not kids, because it's got like such a great cast in it, it's... Yeah. Uh, is uh, well, God, I turned Yorkshire. I said cast rather than cast. Oh my God. God. Oh my God. I've turned all Yorkshire now. Yeah, uh, you should be a northerner like me and Ben. You've, you're, you're an adopted northerner. You've probably been up here practically nearly as long as you were a southerner, weren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, maybe not, but I, I think I've been, what, 2007 since I've been up here. So 13 oh, right. years. Right. 13 years. Yeah. Fair old time. Fair old time. Yeah, fair old time. Um, uh, let's let's chat about some football and uh, let's start with uh, Leeds United uh, down at uh, Fat Frank's Stadium uh, down at uh, Chelsea and yeah three one and uh, watching uh, watching the highlights and watching and looking at all of the the tweets about it everybody's like yeah all right better team one fine okay move on. Uh, so uh, everybody's very magnanimous in this uh, that uh, the, the better team won, Ryan. Yeah, definitely. And I think we we spoke about this when we were previewing the game. You know, we knew Chelsea uh, are a brilliant team that the the, the beat, they were on good form, still are obviously on good form. The slap severe just before the play does, you know. Um, and they had a lot of ammunition in their arsenal to hurt us, and we knew that. But not only that, you know, one of the stats that came out after the game. They were one of the first teams to outrun a Leeds United mass or Lobby else's Leeds United team. They outrun us by six kilometres, which which is a lot. So um, it goes to show how hard they worked to, to get that result. But for me, you know, the, of course, the better team won. Leeds got off to to a good start with the early goal. But even then, before that, Chelsea were, were you know, knocking on the door at Leeds. I think Melia pulled off a, a pretty decent save from um, Timo Werner uh, literally a minute or two before Patrick Bamford scored. So, you know... Um, even when we went 1-0 up, it, it was from a bit of a counter-attack. So, you know, I've not, I've not really got a lot of complaints with Leeds either. I, th- I thought Chelsea pressed us really, really hard from, the, from their front. Um, they made it so difficult for us to actually play, forcing us into errors. You know, some fans have been a bit critical because of the errors and things. But I, I hate to say it, but I have to give credit to Chelsea for forcing those mistakes. You know, we've seen Leeds United do that to a lot of other teams. We've seen Leeds press teams so hard, forcing them into mistakes. Does that make that team a bad team? No, not not, not necessarily. It makes it makes Leeds a good team for doing that. So I'm kind of more more in that camp. I think you know, credit where credit's due to Chelsea. You know. That they, they, they were they were the better team throughout. We we had some spells certainly in the first half, but then the second half they just they just kind of took control and we just struggled to 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 play how we normally play. Um, you know, a couple of thousand fans back in the stadium. Nice to see fans back in, albeit Chelsea fans squealing at Llorente half of the time, which were a bit embarrassing for them. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, they, they they got behind their team and and you know obviously. Hopefully we can get some fans back at Ellen Road soon when we if we ever move out of this tier three. But you know, I think all in all, no massive complaints. That the, the better team genuinely won. I'm sure we'll learn from it. You know, it's a big learning curve for everybody in the, the Leeds team and the, the Leeds United uh, squad management, etc. Um, one thing I would say is, look, let's face it, Chelsea are on Leeds Leeds United's radar and vice versa. We're not challenging for top two, really, are we? Come on, we'd love to be, but we, we, we're a newly promoted team at the end of the day, you know. So for us, it's you know about staying away from that relegation zone and beating teams in and around us. And for Chelsea, it's about trying to be at the top of the the league and and at the very least getting a Champions League spot. So I hate to say it's a gimme because I don't really like that. Oh, it's a gimme. if we lose, it's a gimme. You know, everybody wants to win games, but overall. You know, look, look look at Chelsea's team. I think that Pulisic cost 40, 58 million, and Leeds United's starting line starting lineup costs forty eight million. So the 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 gulf in in 
like the class the the the, the price is the expense it's just massive and leads i think they held their own it's a shame that third one went in to make it look not as good as it could have been but um no better team won some standout performances for me melier was superb he kept the score line down he's getting better and better so that's a positive to take out of it uh ben uh were you getting maybe a little bit excited after bamford scored um because i mean i did a podcast with uh, uh that chelsea podcast um and uh, they were quite dismissive of patrick bamford so when i saw that patrick bamford had scored i was like oh okay well this could get quite interesting because he didn't get even a chance down at stanford bridge so i bet that was a you know a point that he sort of was making straight away i would imagine everybody was getting a bit excited at that point yeah i'm not gonna lie. i got a little giddy and it just wasn't down to the skinny booze that we had on friday as well so <laughs> No, but um, p- perfect start, wasn't it? it the, the start of the game, the first 20 to 30 minutes, was almost like the Everton game, where it was end-to-end. And, yeah, Melier pulled off some fantastic saves. Just how he's developing into a goalkeeper is just fantastic to see. It's, um, for me, he's up there with some, some of the best in the Premier League at the moment. But... Um, no, I'm, I'm with you, Ryan. And I think majority of Leeds fans or people connected to Leeds have, have said it as well. And they hold your hands up and just be like, look, the better team won. Liam Cooper said it perfectly. He said, look, they're very clever, world-class players. What they do, they drag you out of position. And these top players, they can just pop it around the corner, find the spare man. And all this happens at a split second of a time. But the quality teams, the higher you step up, they seem to punish you more and they do it more regularly. So... Look, it's um, again, it's another lesson. It's almost again every after every game, it's almost saying right, another lesson learned. We've learned a lesson here. Even even in the games we've won, even like when we played really well at Everton and got the three points, it's still another game to turn around and say right, we'll learn some lessons for this game going into the next. So it's going to be that kind of season. It's going to be again so so up and down, but. We're just um, again got to keep learning, learning on the job. It's it's difficult. It's the hardest league in the world playing against some of the best players in the world. So um, there's, there's there's some aspects of his game I, I really liked. Really kind of for you know kind of going toe to toe here for one, one of the best teams in in Europe as it stands. You look at the squad, unbelievable players that can choose from, and then yeah, other times the hearts <laughs> are game out for trying to play play out on the pressing is all I would say. Then I know we love to hammer Frank Lampard. Here, but I have to give him credit as well because I think the the the, the four the four games he's had for Derby County uh, playing against us, I think that stood him in good stead. How to set up a team against us, and we, we see the, the obviously the last one, the the, the playoff semi final at Ellen Road. I think they got their tactics spot on that night. Obviously, we didn't help ourselves, but the tactics for Derby got the the, the was spot on. The nullified the they the play a diamond in that game, but. The um, they implemented just the um, closing down the positional sense off the ball and just little triggers. So, so as soon as the ball gets played to Liam Cooper, for example, got someone pressing, they've got someone on a secondary press just in behind, and it's difficult to play out. Then, when players are closing you down at that intensity, that's at that, that speed, it's difficult. You're going to get forced into mistakes, and that's what happened in second half. I just didn't think we could, we could get um, we, could, we couldn't play out, couldn't play between the lines just because. It, it, it wasn't there, and yeah, that 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 start where they've run six k more than as initially. I was a bit surprised, but I've watched um, I've watched the second half back again, and it doesn't surprise me because it was kind of camped in in our own half really. Without it wasn't it wasn't backs to the wall. I didn't feel like it was like relentless pressure, but I just didn't think we was allowed to play a zone game, and for that for that reason, unfortunately, you have to give Lampard and Chelsea a bit of credit for that. Hmm. Um, uh, we had our first proper look at uh, Lorente, of course, hmm. really, um, because uh, Cock had to go off injured pretty earlier on. Um, w- what were your thoughts on uh, Lorente? Um, I, I thought, you know, obviously, I, I hope I have, we've not heard any news on Cock yet. I hope he gets um, fit soon because I think he's a key player to us. He, he's brilliant playing out from the back, but. Um, no, I thought he did well. I thought there were a few little rusty patches. You know, he, he kind of give the ball away once or twice, but it looked pretty, it looked confident. You can tell he's played at a, a decent enough level. Um, he just needs a few more games 
behind him to get to get a bit more match sharp. But no, it looks like a good player, a good a good signing for us. What did you think of him, Ben? Yeah, I just think it's a performance where a guy's been out injured for quite a large time and making his debut coming on against Chelsea. Yeah. You're gonna have you're gonna have good moments. You're gonna have in different kind of moments. But overall, what I saw him, I think there's a good player in there. Mm. Um, again, just needs more minutes. And I've spoken about this yesterday. I think in terms of players like that especially when they've come from abroad and it's your first game you get thrown into after an injury break. It's more the mental side, which you can't really prepare for because, yeah, he's probably done murder ball sessions. He's done loads of running with the physios. So his actual general fitness will be good. But what you can't create, even in murder ball sessions, it's the mentality where everything's under a mile an hour. You're getting pressed left, right and centre. And yeah, you get that in training. But, if you give the ball away in training, it's yeah, you might get you might get a, a telling off from Bielsa, but there's always a second chance, a third chance. It doesn't really matter, it's not going to affect the outcome of, of getting three points where on, on Saturday ev- everything everything matters, and it's just the speed of thought that and um, it is it can be mentally draining and you mm-hmm. do feel tired, it makes your body tired, your energy levels go go down a little bit. So look, I think the um getting what was it? 80 plus minutes under his belt, doing a world of good. So, look, we don't know Cox's situation, but if he's, if your entity's going to start Friday, I think that game will just do him a world of good in terms of just getting him more up to speed of things. Yeah. Uh, ben, what what did you think of Leeds United's substitutions? I mean, we also left it quite late to, to make any subs. Um, and for me, I, I don't really think they had any impact. But again, that's probably more credit to Chelsea nullifying as you know, like Rodrigo. We're all crying out for him, you know, he's our top, you know, our biggest sign signing ever player and and everything. But it, for me, he didn't really get into the game. But I think that's largely because of Chelsea. Well, we made a sub after well, fifty five minutes though, wasn't it? So we made it really what? early. P- Paveda came on. Oh yeah, Paveda um, came on after after, after fifty five. So yeah. against Everton, what what the chat was. Why aren't we making subs and got to the 80th minute? I hadn't made a sub. And now we've made a sub after 55 minutes and like kind of questioning mm. that. So it's it's a no-win yeah. situation. Yeah. No, I, I'm so, sorry. I, I was more referring to Rodrigo than Pivot. Yeah. Pivet. I think it was, I'm just looking at my notes, 68th minute Rodrigo came on. I think a lot of people were maybe crying out for him at half time or or whatever. But I mean, Pavedo, I, I think he, yeah. he's, he's growing with confidence game by game. And well, he's always he's always been a confident lad. He, he looks, I, I love him. I think he's going to be a great little player for us. But I'm more talking about Rodrigo, yeah, yeah, nearly seventieth minute, so he only has twenty odd minutes behind behind him. But like, like I said, and this is absolutely no, I'm not slagging him off or anything at, at all. I think when he came on, he just didn't, he just couldn't really do anything. Leeds couldn't really pick up the ball at that particular point, and that's one of the problems when you're taking somebody out of the team to fit Rodrigo in. It can sometimes disrupt the flow of it, and I think that were the issue with maybe substitution so late for Everton, which. We beat Everton, so it worked. You know, that's the reason probably Bielsa didn't take anybody off. But, I mean, do, do you expect a, a bit of a... I mean, we'll talk about the West Ham game, but do you expect maybe a bit of a change-up in the starting lineup then after after that Chelsea game? Going on the history of Marcelo Bielsa and picking sides, my money would be on no, mm. just because historically... And that's all we can go off, can't we? What he's done in the past for us is stuck with... There's pretty much the same team. Yeah. So after after one defeat, it's not really changed it. That's that's going on in the past. Whether that's right or wrong, that that's what yeah. it's done. So who, who knows what it's going to do for for Friday? But I just thought for for any forward player in the second half against Chelsea, I think we could have thrown Messi and Ronaldo, and I don't think it would make much difference because mm. we couldn't get in the ball. So yeah. it's just it's just it's just one of those things, unfortunately. But. Yeah. Um, um, no, it's um, like I say it's just just one of those games. Again, Liam Cooper when he spoke really, really well about it. Learn the lessons. Good players are allowed to play well, and when they do play well, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to stop them sometimes, especially away from home. So, um, no, it's, um, it's 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 good that we've got like another. It's a tasty game, I think West Ham because they've started decent, so it's another yeah. good game to to, ba- to bounce back against. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, now, with, like I said, there's some good parts of the Chelsea game. Like I said, first 30 minutes end to end. Yet, if Chelsea took their chances, it, it, the scoreline could have been a bit heavier. Let, let, let's be yeah. honest about that. But um, 
but now we're um, it's just just refreshing like at least we're again losing a right way i've spoken about this a few times there's, there's right ways and wrong ways to lose games of football at least we know it's going to be entertaining when we do lose so uh, let's try and take the positives out of it. <laughs> I mean, one, one thing that I've picked up on Ben, and I've noticed in a, this in a couple of games, so in particular the Chelsea game, and this is a criticism of, of the Leeds United team, is I feel we're a bit weak from set pieces. Every set piece, it seemed like a Chelsea a Chelsea shirt. We're on the end of every every set piece they had. You know, um, is that a concern for you? Is it something you've noticed? Uh, I've noticed this for. 12 months maybe now i don't okay. like the, i personally don't like the setup of how we defend them um you need them for me you need a mixture of um zonal marking and man marking i don't i don't believe fully fully zonal i don't believe fully got every man man for man because then it's 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 difficult so for me so if you look at the setup patrick bamford's in the front post zone um it, it does quite a lot clear the clear the ball out we see it from wide free kicks as well he's always that first kind of person in the in the, fr the front zone so any balls in that area that's his job to go attack away from that we're just opening anywhere like between the penalty spot to the six yard line in the middle of the goal there's no bodies because all the area we are man marking now the best teams i've played in when we've been well i felt solid defending set pieces is that we've had the front post zone like patrick bamford but then we've had another player stood in the middle of the six yard box where he's free and his job is any ball in that area go attack because if there's no one there like we've 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 seen a couple of times now with zuma zuma only has to get a get a bit of luck liam cooper was it a foul or not i don't think it was but it's just a bit of an unfortunate situation where you get in the penalty box, goes to the floor, and then he's free. Mm. But for, for me, if we did have someone in the middle of the six-yard box where the kind of the ball was near, I think uh, we're getting a challenge on Zuma. So for me, I'd like to see his set up like that. And I think it's only just one little sort of change, just whether you bring an extra man off the edge of the box to go mark up and then free someone who's marking up to be free on on the six yard box. So I just think it's a subtle change, but from my experience, that's when I felt more comfortable defending set pieces because I was a, I was a main job for me. I used to love getting stood on the post just because I thought, Ooh, if we score, if we concede here, it's not my fault. I'm stood on the post, so I can't get <laughs> finger played at me. <laughs> but, but, but probably 95% of the time I had my, my role was to pick somebody up and it was almost probably the third best header of the ball. We used to have as two centre halves or a centre half, and um, if we had a good forward picking someone up, and then I were the next third person. So I was always marking someone who would need it in the air, and I always found I like, get touched tight, but it could even be touched tight, and they might get a header away on you. But if we had someone in the six-yard box and it was coming around that area, it took responsibility, head the ball clear. And then it made me look good because my man hadn't scored. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just, so I just think just a little sort of change and that'll make a big difference. But then you look at the height of the team; we're not a big team, so it's. Um, I think it's just something to work. And I'm, I'm not sure uh, Marcelo and all the coaches okay. have looked at different ways what the thing might their setup might be best. But for me, if I were setting any team up to defend set pieces, that's what I do. A man in the front zone. A man free on the six yard box, and then the what well, a, man, a man on the post, couple on edge of the box, rest, rest pick up. Yeah. Um, uh, what sort of tricks when you're defending and you're just sort of mad man marking someone, what sort of like little tricks do defenders use? I remember hearing an interview with I think Tony Adams once, and he was saying, Oh, he says, You, you try all sorts of things, you like you're digging nails into people, and uh, there's all sorts of little things, little kicks like at the back of the shin so no one can see it. Um, what's sort of, what were the Ben Parker, what was in the Ben Parker locker of tricks that you used to do as a defender? Now I was large and behold, I were a bit uh, just bog standard because then you could get a lot tighter, just like pull the shirt, but obviously not with arm's length, just get quite tight. Just have a grasp of the shirt, just try and like put your arm across them a bit, bit solid. Odd time there's been like a few nips, so guys used to come up and like used to nip you under the back of your tricep. Well, that hurt, that hurt. Mm -hmm. it make, makes you want to punch them straight away. And <laughs> um, but no, like nothing, nothing really. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can remember one game there where this this was at Harrogate Town, and um, lad there Joe Leasley, top top guy, funny guy, 
and um, we used to like just get in this guy's um, guy's head. We used to sing him a song, and he used to look look used to look at us, thinking, "What the hell are these two on about?" We used to think we're lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. There's Ben Parker's guide to defending. Sing, sing, sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's definitely the way to go. That's what I'll be doing. Definitely. That's what I'll be doing. Uh, we've got loads of comments coming in uh, this morning. So thanks very much uh, for sending them all uh, through. Uh, we're live streaming, of course, on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, loads coming in about the Chelsea game. Sean said, morning, gents. No shame losing to Chelsea. Anyone else notice the way Frank Lampard celebrated the third goal like it just won the league? After all this crying Liverpool last season, it was rather embarrassing. He didn't beat Leeds. He just just outspent us. Um, uh, so uh, thanks very much uh, for that one. Um, uh, now, this is interesting. Jaggy Babs uh, says, uh, lads, should Harrison be starting every week? It's been three seasons now with no consistency. I think he's a pretty consistent player. He had, he had bit, maybe a little bit of an off game, but on the whole for three seasons, I think he's been one of Leeds' best players, Ben. I think he's done, done really. I think the last probably 18 months, he has been consistent. But again, going back to the point Saturday, I think you could label every like the majority of the uh, attacking-minded players. It just wasn't a game for him because we couldn't get into the game, couldn't have a foothold, didn't have like a sustained bit of, bit of pressure throughout, throughout the whole game. So I just don't think it was Harrison. I think Rafinha, compared to the Everton game, he didn't have enough spe- as much space to run into. Therefore, he couldn't create as much again compared to the Everton game. So... I just don't think it was Jack Harrison on Saturday. Like it's, it's it's very difficult to sustain a bit of pressure when you haven't got the ball and you're getting pressed like Chelsea are doing. So no, I'd I'd, I'd say I think it's been pretty. Con- it's it's improved more and more and more as these kind of what, two and a bit seasons has been with us now. I, that's what I'd say. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Lee reckoning uh, we should have had a pen at 2-1 score. That is 2-2. Two, two. It's a shame players have to chuck themselves on the floor uh, to get anything these days. I think that's the Rafinha incident, isn't it? I think, Ryan? Yeah, it's a funny one, that, because we saw a very similar thing with uh, Robertson at uh, Liverpool versus Brighton, wasn't it? And um, Or Brighton versus Liverpool. And it was... Um, uh, Danny Welbeck, I think, who clashed feet with with Robertson, and yeah, obviously Welbeck went down, and Perveda managed to keep his um, keep his balance, and and you could just see with Perveda, we just focused on the ball to try and get a shot away. Um, yeah, it wasn't Rafinha, Darren, it, it was Perveda. Oh. Um, yeah, and um, if Perveda went down, probably would have been given. Do I think that's a penalty? Did I think the Welbeck one were a penalty? I, I, I don't, I don't think so, mate. It's a bit soft, but. Look, look, I mean, obviously, that's your opinion, Ben. I, I've, I were a centre half at a really, really crap level of football, and I used to put in a lot more heavier challenges than that, and not expect to foul. But obviously, in today's game, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot softer. I mean, what, what do you think to, to the Robertson one, and then obviously this potential Perveda one? Ben? Oh, let, let them know you're there, Ryan. Get through the back of them, boot yeah. them up in there. Go on, go on. <laughs> That's how, that's how we did it for Rothwell. Uh, Rothwell FC. Uh. Yeah, play against that Wilson place for them. Keep away from him. He's right there. <laughs> I, got injured, I got injured more than you, Ben, to be honest with you. I, I, crikey, I used to play one game and about eight games out. That's how my ratio, one game. One game I'd, 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 I'd take that. <laughs> 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 uh, keep your comments coming in You've got lots of them uh, coming in uh, this morning um, uh, Aiden uh, saying that uh, yeah we did, he did beat Leeds and soundly did it at the same time they nullified us completely yes out of some quality players and that's the difference between a top six side and newly promoted you have to give Lampard a lot of credit we could have lost five or six with the chances that they had and uh, Johnny looking forward uh, Johnny, Johnny Brown everybody knows Johnny Brown uh, six points the next two games will set us off lovely uh for the turning the scum over at the dark side of the pennines hope you're well lads i'll listen back later well i uh, hope you're listening back to this now uh, uh johnny f- final thoughts on chelsea just chalk it up to experience really yeah i think so you know a, a team with a lot of world talented you know top players in in the, in the team and just got to give them credit for what they did on the day you know they, they used the, the the quality and and then they got the tactics right as well and Deserve to win the game. No arguments with that. Um, for me, Melier was getting better and better and better. And um, for the rest of the guys, I think it's a big learning curve. So, you know, as, as a lot of Leeds fans are saying, we move on. And we've got a game against West Ham 
you know, this weekend and let's move on to that. Forget about the Chelsea game and, and try and pick up some more points. We go again. We go again. Uh, okay. Uh, time to hear from uh, one of our sponsors, of course. Uh, and obviously in this new season, we've got a uh, limited time offer with The Athletic. You can join The Athletic for just £1 a month. £1 a month. Um, so you get all of The Athletic for that, for every sports story that matters, breaking news, experts, commentary, in-depth stories on every team uh, that you care about, every league that you follow, all in a personalised, ad-free environment. And, of course, fantastic Leeds United coverage from the illustrious Bill Hay. Um, and uh, there is an interesting uh, article I saw that he'd done on Sunday. Um, this was after, uh, well, it, it starts to talking about Stamford Bridge's final stop on Leeds United's last journey through the Premier League. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite interesting because it's all about uh, Leeds supporters deserving to see this team. Uh, but he does talk about like Chelsea fans were being charged £75 a ticket, um, but also some of them uh, being charged £450 for a three-course meal um, and, and a ticket. Um, but uh, it's, it's a really interesting article about um, whether or not we're in what tier we're going to be in and uh, 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 getting fans back into the stadium because a decision is going to be made on the tiers, I think, uh, and next week. I mean... <sighs> It would be great, wouldn't it, Ryan and Ben, to, to get some uh, fans back in pretty soon, uh, and certainly for over the festive period, it would be it would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you know, just just the Stamford Bridge uh, Leeds versus Chelsea down at Stamford Bridge. It was um, two thousand fans, and it's about a fifty thousand capacity stadium. Look, we weren't in the stadium, but on TV you could hear the noise. So. Um, you know, even if we can manage to get a couple of thousand in Ellen Road, you know, obviously it's it's going to upset thousands and thousands of others who can't get in. But you know, um, I just think it'd be nice to just have some some people in the stadium. I think you're right. Um, now, if you want to uh, subscribe to The Athletic, just £1 a month for the first 12 months. All you need to do is go to theathletic.com slash LS11 for more information. Sign up, subscribe and get full access to Phil Hay. Well, well, to his journalism, don't actually get full access to Phil Hay. Um, that's more than a pound a month. Uh, <laughs> And I'm not sure you can get that on a subscription uh, right now. Okay, let's get into some news, shall we? Yes, it's time for Any News, Graham, brought to you by our friends at Football Prizes. And um, this week, uh, well, they had a, a few Leeds United prizes on offer this week, but two of them were already sold out, so you can't get on with them. But there is one more Leeds United prize that is uh, having a draw on Monday the 14th of December. So you've got a little bit of time on this one. And um, this is really pretty. It's a squad-signed Leeds United 1972 FA Cup final montage signed by 10 legends. So it's been signed by Jack Charlton, Norman Hunter, Eddie Gray, Alan Clark. Um, and it is absolutely beautiful. Really, really gorgeous. There's just 99 tickets available for this uh, this raffle they're priced just three pounds 95 each and um get on it quick because these Leeds united ones sell out really really quickly um so find out a little bit more at footballprizes.co.uk uh click on competitions and you'll find out uh, a little bit more about that one it ends on the uh, 14th okay um in the news and uh, well let's start with another legion leeds is turning into like the mural city um, first of all, we saw that the, the Bielsa one, then there was another Bielsa one, um, and, uh, the, the Pablo, the Calvin one, of course, and now there's a Pablo one, which looks awesome, Ryan. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, it looks absolutely brilliant. And, um, you know, well done to Legion United supporters, trust for commissioning that and, and Rim Scaffolding, who put the scaffolding up for free for them. Um, I know the owner of Rim Scaffolding, Pete Madden, massive Leeds fan. Um, so it's just brilliant that. You know these people are all coming together for, for 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 ultimately us fans, and it's on the side of the Duck and Drake pub in Le in Leeds City Centre. And it looks brilliant, and the thing is, the mural. I'm sure everybody's seen it. Was listening to this, but if you haven't, it's it's that iconic celebration after that Swansea goal last season, and um, what Pablo scored. And for me, Ben, that Swansea goal when Pablo scored it, 
I think for me that was a point where I actually thought Leeds are going up. So to see it in a mural is great, isn't it? Yeah, the, exactly for me. The point when I just thought, we've actually done this. Mm. Like, what the hell's going on? And then I had to get shoved in a studio two minutes later and try and act a bit professional, but that, that, <laughs> that went out a window. <laughs> Bryn, Bryn's Law, Bryn Law's commentary. Yeah. Unreal. It'll go down forever, will that? Fantastic. But um, now you're right, Darren, just seeing all these murals all over the city, it's fantastic. I think uh, me and some friends were saying um, when we come out of these like lockdown restrictions, we need to, need to do like a pub crawl to go teach one and view them. I think it'd be a nice little good route, would that? Mm. Yeah, it would. The Leeds United <laughs> mural pub crawl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should do that. We should definitely Organized do that. Organised pub crawl. Organised yeah. pub crawl. I'm liking yeah. that idea. Yeah. Good. That's good. But uh, no, it's, it's absolutely superb. And um, yeah, I, I think, again, all, all credit to Legion United Supporters Trust for commissioning that and all the hard work gone into it because we spoke to them weeks and weeks ago and they were telling us about it. And, you know, obviously these things don't happen just overnight. So um, credit to them. And um, if you're not already a member of Legion United Supporters Trust, please sign up. I think it's only £10 a season. It's not a lot. And um, all the money goes to, to good causes. And yep, do that. Yeah, definitely do that. Do you think we're going to be seeing any more? This seems to be a little bit of a trend now. Do you think we could be seeing any more murals going up? Somewhere? I think the trust have more in the pipeline from what I'm hearing. Um, mm. So maybe we might see some more. Oh, that's exciting. All right. I like it. I really, I really think they're a great idea. Mm. Uh, so well done. Um, November's Premier League goal of the month. Rafinha, uh, Ben, is up for this one in his uh, goal against Everton. Uh, well deserved. Um, it was all right. Finish. <laughs> I've, I've, I've scored better myself, but it was all right, you know. <laughs> of the month, I think you, you you might be on to one then. Um, for one particular cross, I'm thinking of. I'm wondering when. Maybe. What what were your goal for Leeds? Were it against Hereford or somebody like that, Ben? Um, it, it it was Northampton, Ryan. It was about 40, 45 yards out, just to be cobblers. You were right. You were right. P rolling into the bottom corner. Good finish, though, Ben. Like. You hit it from far out. Goalkeeper should have saved it, but whatever. <laughs> the power, the dip, the swerve, windy, wet condition. Like you, nah, you could, you could, you could, have had, you could have had two Peter Schmeichels in there. You wouldn't have saved it. <laughs> windy, wet conditions. That's Ben Parker conditions. Oh, so. yeah. but only one Melier. Only needed one Melier, and it would have been saved, Ben. <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult to see. Uh, uh, so, well done, Rafinha, is effectively what we're saying. Well done. You scored the goal and you're in Premier League goal of the month. Um, uh, under 23s, uh, they they keep on signing uh, players on uh, uh, new contracts, which is fantastic. Uh, Niall Huggins has now signed on until 2023. Ben, what, what are your thoughts on Niall Huggins? For me, he's probably arguably the best, the best player, the standout player. In a very, very good team this year. You think of Joe Gellart, Sam Greenwood. They've been getting headlines. Jack Jenkins as well. He was, yeah. uh, he, was on, he was on the bench, I think, against Crystal Palace. So the, these lads, Charlie Creswell's been been good as well. Cody Drama. So there's a lot of I'm really team off here. But uh, there's been some good players. But for me, Niall Huggins. So people who haven't seen many 23s, I don't know what Niall Huggins is about, is a right-footed player. I seen him play last season, season before, as either left of a three up front or as a number ten. He's played left back this season, so so he's been playing left back, and you just give him the ball and he just glides past people. It's like we're reinventing how to play a fullback position because <laughs> it's just it's just um, it's just not normal to be honest. But full credit to Niall Huggins, he's gone into that position. He's been absolutely superb. So. Well, well, well deserved the new contracts. Just hope he keeps developing the the way he has been so far. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that, Ben. Um, the retail stores, Leeds United retail stores, uh, as of uh, the second of December, they are officially back open, uh, and they are ready to welcome back fans. And um, is it like Primark? Are they open twenty four hours, Ryan? Do we know that? I don't think they'll be open in twenty four hours. Um... <laughs> Aaron, but I, I'm sure if they did open 24 hours, there'd be probably some fans strolling in at four o'clock, maybe to buy a a, a legit mug or something. But um, no, back, back up and just in time for Christmas. Obviously, after these crazy yeah. lockdown conditions and blah blah blah, um, at the back open to 
take Leeds United fans' cash and inject it back into the club so Leeds United fans also can have some nice clobber and memorabilia. So, um, all good. Yeah, all good. And who knew that Primark, we've been saying Primark all wrong. It's Primark, apparently. Is it? In Ireland, they call it Primark. Uh, Jerry might be able to tell us a little bit more, but apparently that's that's uh, that's what you call Isn't it. Isn't that just like a, an, ac- an accent thing or something, though? It could be. It could be. Uh, like, like Americans, in, tomato, tomato, and all that sort of jazz. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sony, Sony, could be either of those. You call Adidas something weird, don't you? Adidas or something you call it. Do I say Adidas? Or, yeah, I think it's, what's it's, the other one? What's Bowie, the one or Bowie? Bowie or Bowie? I think I say Bowie. I think I say Bowie. A lot of people say Bowie. I think Southerners I've said Bowie, Bowie before as well. Yeah. See, it's like you know. Jerry McNamee's just commented in saying, "In Ireland, it's called oh, pennies." Pennies. Yeah, true. Is oh, it? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, Jerry McNamee. Do they um, sell any Thierry Henry memorabilia in there by any chance? <laughs> 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 T-shirts with the that that the hand of Thierry on it. <laughs> 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 you can see it now. You can see it now. Um, uh, and talking about World Cup qualification, um, Cleach versus Phillips. Yes, 2022 World Cup 2022 qualification group. England and Poland have been drawn together. At one point, it looked like it could have been Cleach, Phillips, and Ali Oscar. Um, very, very quickly. Uh, so it's very, very close. <laughs> Cherry just saying, back off. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, appreciate that, Jerry. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Cleesh tweeted, uh, I'm coming for you. You better wear this with a picture of uh, some shin pads. Um, so mouthwatering qualification between England and Poland. And, yeah, we were just a whisker away, a whisper away from uh, England as well as Macedonia and Poland in the same group, which could have been all sorts of fun uh, yeah, with Ali yeah. Oscar. But, yeah, quite quite looking forward to that. I mean, yeah, England. At least there's a little bit of interest now, isn't there? Yeah, there, yeah, there is with uh, Phillips, and of course there is. But um, I thought that tweet were classed by Click. He, he seems such a character, does Click, you know, from his social media presence, etc. I bet he's right, laughing, dressing room and stuff like that. And, you know, the, funny because the shin pads were these big garish pink things as well. They looked horrible. You know, they didn't look like decent trendy shin pads or whatever modern footballers wear. They looks like something I used to wear like 20 years ago or something. <laughs> They're awful. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, w- w- did you have a particular brand of shin pad, uh, Ben? Did you have sponsored shin pads or did you did you not wear shin pads? What, what were your preferred? No, I, w- I was shin pads. Um, Adidas just because got my boots from Adidas. Uh, was like, just saying like, what, whatever you got. But used to back end of... Um, my career they used to we could buy these shin pads personalized ones they'd like mold it to your shin um they'd be made out of like carbon fiber and the, the cost wow, i can't remember what the price was i think it's between definitely between 100 and 200 quid for a pair of shin pads really really expensive but i was like God. i'll take a freebie any day <laughs> <laughs> did you get one for free did you get them for free not the expensive ones no just added some added ass ones all right okay fair enough I used to get um, mine from Sports Direct. <laughs> <laughs> Sports Direct. That's what we like. I got I, some Nike, Nike ones from Sports Direct. I remember. Still got them somewhere. I used to just use newspaper. That's in those days. That's all we had. Couldn't afford shoe pads. Just used newspaper. And, I know some of the lads, there's like a bit of like foam. You can like just, they just used to cut out and shove that down because they hated wearing shin pads. But right. just gave the illusion to like the, um, the linesman, I was like, you're coming out of the change room when they're checking your boots, they're checking jewellery, checking your um, cycling shorts at the same colour, all that. Oh, like, so they just looked like they had shin pads, but it was just a bit of foam. So <laughs> they hated wearing them. Uh, Did, I've got one. Sorry, carry on, Brian. I was just going to say, Ben, you know, you're playing football. Like, obviously, you've played a pretty decent standard. I, I genuinely used to like wearing shin pads because if I didn't, I used to come off with practically shattered shins like the amount of clashing of of shins and getting booted about and stuff my shin pads proper proper did the job is it a bit different at professional level because you're actually all pretty good you know like um <laughs> if you actually like want to like you know you know you, you're not you're not asked about wearing them if, if you if you could get away with it well no one wears them in training so oh, yeah. no it's just 
you don't you don't bother with them. Right. Um, but no, like I, I, I used to be going up before, like going out to warm up. I used to put mine on, and I used to tape up my socks before I went out to warm up. Where I'd probably say 90, 90 to ninety five percent of lads wouldn't. They just have like the socks rolled down, and then when they come back in after the warm, that's when they put the pads and the tape up and stuff. But I like to try and warm up as I as I play around. Right? You know what I mean? Just get straight into the thick of the action. I agree. I'd do the yeah. same. I any good. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, one final bit of news. In fact, uh, our brother from another mother, Gary Devonport, has uh, tw- uh, sent us a message saying, "Morning, you award nominees. What's your dress dress code for tonight?" I got to be honest with you, I'd forgotten all about it. But <laughs> apparently, it's the football content awards tonight, which were nominated as well. People voted for us, so uh, thanks very much if you did vote for us in the football content awards. I think it starts at like six o'clock tonight. Yeah, it's six PM, and and it's 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 just flown past us a little bit, unfortunately, because yeah. then this is meant to you meant to have a bit of a do with this, you know. I think the, um, it was held. I could be wrong, but were it were it the Spurs, the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? It, it was yeah, meant to be. It's gonna yeah, be down. Right. we were going to go down yeah. on the piss, um, uh, lads, 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 uh, <laughs> in London, um, and uh, yeah, we we can't do that now. We're going to have to watch. Yeah. Twi- so they're just streaming the awards, which is which is a shame because um, last season, Talking Shut were also nominated and Gary and it were over at this um, Etihad Stadium and Gary said it was a really a real good night. You know, they all had, had quite a few jars and and enjoyed themselves. So it's a shame that we all can't be down because there's us Talking Shut, Leeds United themselves have been nominated, um, uh, all Leeds TV being nominated. So there's quite a few Leeds based content people being nominated for various things. We're up for best podcast and best in video. Um, so we've got a couple of, of awards. We're up against some colossal content creators. Will we win? Probably not, but it's nice to be nominated at very least. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But anyway, thanks for the people who voted for us earlier on last earlier on this, this year. And um, yeah. may, maybe next year we can get voted again and go and have a bit of a booze up representing Leeds. <laughs> I think so. I think so. We could do, do you know what? I, I was thinking that there is so much Leeds United content. You could just do an award ceremony just for Leeds United content mm-hmm. um, in Leeds. You could, ju- you could just do that, you know, because there's so many Leeds United podcasts and Leeds United video content and Leeds United media. We could just do that. I mean, obviously, you, you would call them the, the, the Hayes, uh, and you know it's the Phil Hay Awards, the, the Hayes. Uh, I, I think there's something uh, there's there's something there to that. Jerry's actually uh, messaged in and saying, "Can I collect the award, Darren?" Um, and uh, which is um, uh, people may not know, but um, uh, at a previous radio station that I worked at, we won an award uh, in London uh, for I think it was I can't remember what the award was. We won it was the IRN Awards, and we won it for sports coverage. And Jerry was ra- randomly. We met Jerry in London. Um, we had a few drinks with him, and we took him to the award ceremony. And Jerry went and picked up the award for us. We sat down. And we set Jerry up to pick the award up. <laughs> so, and there's pictures of him on the IRN Awards um, from maybe four years ago, five years ago, I want to say. Um, but Jerry's the one that's been given from the head of IRN, given the award. Ah, uh, oh, great times, great times. Um, but um, yeah, maybe maybe we could um, uh, do some sort of like uh, Leeds based podcast awards. I think uh, Steve saying it's, it's a good podcast, guys. I have to admit, I only listen to LS11. Used to listen to them all. Uh, well, keep listening. Uh, and uh, thanks very much for doing so. And if you did, like Ryan said, if you did vote for us, then uh, thanks very much, Jerry. Saying it was his uh, greatest moment. Uh, <laughs> Picking up that war, so thanks very much for that. Um, uh, on the way, we've got the Alioski files, but uh, let's get into what's becoming obviously the greatest feature um, that podcasts, not just LS11, podcasts have ever heard. <laughs> Ryan's Riffs with Ryan Wilson from the Pigeon Detectives. Pigeon Detectives? That's such a silly name. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, Ryan's Riffs with Ryan Wilson from the Pigeon Detectives. 
randomly, uh, I was listening to a lot of pigeon detectives yesterday. I had to go and pick my car up over in uh, Huddersfield uh, after it was getting some work done. And uh, I, I listened, uh, for, uh, it just span around on my Apple Music, and um, loads of pigeon detectives uh, tracks came on one on off after the other. Um, they, were, they were all right, actually, right? They're, they're not, not a bad band, are they? We didn't do bad, did we? We did all right. We yeah, did all did. right. You did all right. Um, Okay, so uh, this is part of the show uh, where Ryan uh, teaches everyone to learn a new track each week. And I'm going to put Ryan full screen if you're watching on uh, Facebook and on uh, Twitter. So he's got his guitar there. And uh, what what are you going to be teaching us this week, Ryan? Um, I think last week we did the Frank Lampard song, didn't we? Yeah. And somebody mentioned it last week on one of the comments, and I thought, you know what, I'll have a look to see if I can play that, because believe it or not, not every song's kind of designed to be played on a guitar. If it's been wrote on a piano, for example, it can be really difficult to play on a guitar. Um, So there's a a song by a band called The Beautiful South. Oh, yeah. The song's called Rotterdam, and, and it's actually Leeds United fans have adapted it to one of our great midfield players, Matthias Click, and it goes something like this. This is a terrace version. So it could be 20 yards or 30 yards everywhere we go. 40 yards or 50 yards, click your scoring goals. Click your scoring goals. I really like that. That was very, very good. There we go. So yep. click the scoring goals. I, I, do you know what? I'd not even heard that one. So that's that, it's a good one, isn't it? You have been at stadium in a while, have you, Darren? But yeah, that's sung on the terraces every week. Certainly if click scores or even if he has a decent shot, that tends to be sung. So um, we need click to be scoring a few more goals, actually. He's, um, he's had a few wayward shots in the last few games. Um, he needs to hit the back of the net soon. Please, Matthias, that'd be nice. That would be very, very nice. Uh, wonderful stuff. Thank you very much for that. Of course, Ryan from the Pigeon Detectives, Ryan Wilson, uh, with another one of Ryan's riffs. And of course, we'll have another Ryan's riff uh, next week. If you've got a request, uh, then all you need to do is tweet us at LS11LUFC or pop it in the comments, and uh, Ryan will do his level best uh, to get that to you uh, next week. Right, let's get into the Alioski files. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Yes, it is the Alioski Files, named after our fine Macedonian friend, uh, of course, Jani Alioski, because he's a little bit of a nutter. Uh, so we find things that are a little bit different in the world of football and uh, and elsewhere as well. And it's uh, brought to you, of course, every single week by our friends at It Technology, award-winning tech guys who are based in Leeds. They sell affordable gadgets like smart doorbells, ear pods, tablet PCs, much, much more. Uh, they're huge Leeds United fans themselves. They've got some great deals as well for our listeners check them out it technology um okay ryan let's come to you first of all what are you chucking into the alioski bin this week uh this is a story guys which i know you've all seen and probably everybody's seen it's one of the reasons i'm wearing my leeds rhino shirt today um kevin sinfield um leeds united legend running seven marathons in seven days to raise money and awareness for his pal, friend, teammate, colleague, whatever you want to call him, all of the above, Rob Burrow and um, MND, Motor Neuron Disease Charities. And um, it's just been absolutely incredible, an incredible story. We've all been following it. And um, it, I think as when I wrote my notes initially, I think he'd raised over one and a half million, but I think that's about 1.6, 1.7 million as of right now. I saw this yeah. morning. So um, that's just absolutely incredible, and and it, it, heartwarming is that the right word? It's it, it's 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 incredible. It's it's sad. It's emotional. Like when you're crossing the line, or he's, you know, he's doing it for his pal, his teammate. You know, I'd do it for for my mates in the band, and and I think Rob Burrow says, you know, he'd do it for him, and and Kevin Sidfield said the same. Said. You know, I know he'd do it for me, and and you know, it's just a, a beautiful story. But also off the back of that, um, a pal of ours, uh, Ollie Holmes, Cast Tigers. That's what I mentioned, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's raised over fourteen k, 
um, for the same charity for Rob Burrow, um, cycling 100 kilometers a day for seven days. So, um, you know, even, you know, people like Ollie Holmes, who plays for arguably a rival of, of, of Leeds Rhinos, is, is, it's just everybody coming together for, 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 for a, a well worthy cause. So, just my hats, I take my hat off to all these guys. It's just incredible. And, um, you know, brilliant work, everybody. And, and that's all I can really yeah. say. Superb. It is superb. Uh, well done. Oh, it's going to be tough to beat, I think. It's going to be tough to beat. Uh, ben, what, that one. Yeah. <laughs> ben, what are you chucking in? <laughs> I don't want to chuck anything in, to be honest. I just want, I just want to speak about Kevin Sinfield and what they've done. About Ollie Holmes as well. The good thing mm. of what I've seen about him before he set off on his last 100K, he was just like, look, guys, don't send any sponsorship my way. Go over to Kevin Sinfield's page and give him the sponsorship money because at the time we were just below a mil. Um, right. So it, it just it just goes to show the the connection these rugby guys have have for each other. It's it's just I don't know like it's emotional. You're watching all these um, videos like BBC are putting up, then the um, the RFL are putting on as well. So it's um, so so like it's inspiring. It's it makes you want to go do something. It makes you feel like you know Rob Burrow yourself. Yeah, exactly. that, that's what it makes you feel like. And you just want to do something, just try and help out as much as possible. But no, it's unreal. So what what, what else can I throw into match that? Like, I don't know that um, Bell and agent of Paul Pogba throw him in it, shall we? Because he's a Bell. So. <laughs> Mini Raiola, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's come out saying he wants to go. So just you know, get get rid of him. Crappy agents, crap players. I like get rid of him, but I don't want to talk about them as much. So. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I have what, what, I've got a couple actually. Uh, I don't think they're going to beat. Sakev, uh, let's be fair, but um, the, the non footballing ones that I have, um, is uh, uh, someone by the name of at Whispers67 on Twitter who tweeted, um, uh, this uh, to the band Shed Seven Why don't you answer your phones? I've tried without success to contact you for weeks since you failed to install my shed on the 24th of November. Hashtag crap customer service. Of course, Shed7 don't actually install sheds. Um, but uh, Shed7 did tweet her back uh, saying, sorry to hear your shed hasn't been installed, Joe, but we manufacture indie rock anthems. And alas, cannot help you. We'd be bloody useless with a hammer. Uh, so uh, well done, Rick Witter. Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> on from Shed7, because uh, that really did make me chuckle. I think I saw you tweet about that as well. Ryan, yeah, right? that, that really made me laugh that. That's brilliant, is that? Uh, the other one as well is um, the, we saw the uh, COVID jab. People are getting the first COVID jabs uh, today. And the this is just amazing. The second patient, the second patient in the UK to get the COVID jab uh, was at the Universal Hospital, University Hospital in Coventry. And his name is William Shakespeare from Warwickshire. Who knew he was still alive? Uh, so, uh, but now COVID safe as well. Yep, yep. It can continue to to write many many plays, Darren, for or books, whatever, exactly. for, for a long time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I've got one sport one to put in, only for the fact that it really caught my eye last night, and that uh, they're announcing all the uh, the sports for the twenty twenty four Olympics, and uh, break dancing has. Uh, bossed it and put it in it is now in uh for the olympics uh loads of people said it's not a sport it's not a sport it's very competitive it's very competitive uh so uh break dancing uh thoughts ben do you are you thinking of um uh joining me i'm gonna i've got my lino ready so um I, i'm thinking of getting me getting it back into practice flipping out the windmill uh and uh preparing for 2024 what do you reckon no, well, I thought, I thought about it when I seen it got announced. I thought, right, this this is actually my talent. I, I could actually do something for our country. Stood on that podium, singing the national anthem with that gold medal around me. But then I heard the Bournemouth baller is coming out of retirement to go to do a little one-two step. So I thought, and it's 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 not my gig. I just get soundly beaten into silver. So Bournemouth baller, it's on to you. Uh, I'll, I'll be up for that. I'll be up for that. But I, my breakdancing career did get curtailed after I did a swan dive at a wedding. I really bashed my chin. Um, so uh, so it, it pretty much stopped after that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm willing to step up and have a little go. Yeah. Um, but I wonder what's going to win 
the Alioski files this week. I, I think it's obviously got to be Sir Kev, hasn't it? Se- seven marathons in seven days is insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it just goes. Can we talk about the times they got as well? Oh yeah. All- Sub four hours, all of them sub four hours. In fact, he got faster as the week went on. The last one, I think, was a little bit slower uh, uh, than the previous, but fair enough. He'd done six. So I, I think the sixth one were his slowest, but then on the seventh one, he beat the sixth time. You know, probably adrenaline towards the last bit, you know, I guess people had pushed him. But yeah, absolutely incredible. You know, I'd be probably still doing the first one after seven days if I had a pop at that, you know, but um. Anyway, it's 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 just incredible, isn't it? You know, um, I think he, he did when he did an interview. He just kind of said, like, you know, one of the hardest things is recovering after the the um, after the marathon to get his body ready for the next one. And yeah, you know, he just did it. Just he just did it. He, he, he rested. He, he got himself ready. And a guy like him would never ever drop out, even if he's like ranging off. He'd still he'd still run it. And for his pal, so yep. Full credit to Kevin Sinfield for the money he's raised for his mate and, um, of course, the awareness. And um, it deserves to be in the Alioski files for all the right reasons. Well done, Sir Kev. And uh, hopefully at some point you will be actually Sir Kev, although you are Sir Kev to us anyway and always will be. Uh, Okay, so well done. Uh, He has won the Alioski files this week. This is LS11. Uh, it's West Ham next uh, for Leeds United. Uh, another confusing uh, kickoff day and time. Friday, 8 o'clock. At some point, it'll be Saturday at 3 o'clock. At some point, it will be. Um, so it's West Ham, the Amers, uh, which, uh, uh, of course, is for, for, for Leeds United at uh, home. It's an Ellen Road kickoff. Um, thoughts on this one, Ryan? What what do you reckon? West Ham. Um, yeah. No. They haven't been too bad, actually. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah. they've been a bit ropey the last few seasons, but they've actually done all right this season. Um, where are they? They're sat in seventh. They're only a couple of points off the top four, you know, to get in the Champions League spot. Um, last game, they got beat by Man United, but for about two thirds of that game, they were the better team. Man United got a bit of a controversial, yeah, exactly. They got a bit of a controversial goal, didn't they, scum? So that kind of swung the pendulum a bit there, where after that, um, but. No, they're a decent team. I mean, they, they went on a 3-3 a three and three win just before the Man United game. But to be honest with you, they were against some of the bottom teams like um, Fulham, Sheffield, United and Aston Villa. So and Aston Villa, quite not quite at the bottom, but still, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's like any game in the Premier League, it's going to be tough, really. I haven't watched enough of West Ham to overly comment on everybody. But one of the players for me, standout player, I thought it was brilliant in the championship when he was at Hull is uh, Jared Bowen, good player. We kind of always thought he's going to end up getting a move away from the championship and we went to West Ham and, you know, he, he did all right-ish last season, for the, the period we were there for the back at last half of the season, but he seems to have really come to light this season, scoring four goals, getting assists, you know, he's a good player, somebody we've got to watch out for, um, but he will be somebody that Marcelo Bielsa knows about. So, um, yeah, they're not a bad team. The one three they've won three lost two drawn one in in the last six so um yeah it's not not going to be an easy game ben what's your thoughts on this it's a typical david moyes team the the physical the um the very good from set pieces so speaking about what we did earlier in the show about trying to brush up on the little set pieces routines i'm sure that's been a big focus in our preparation for, for this game but Tough game. The um, now they've been, like I said, they've started season pretty pretty well, pretty solid. They play three at the back, two wing backs. So we will need to set up. Maybe might be a little bit different. We know we try and alternate depending on different teams' formations. So it's um, it's going to be a difficult game. We have to start well, just do do the right things at the right times. Try not make it too much of that the old basketball type of match end to end. So just try and get a bit of control. If we can do that, we definitely can definitely can beat them. But it's a game again. I think any any game to to win in the Premier League, you have to be near your best. So we have to be coming out of the traps, expect expecting like or thinking we're playing a Chelsea, a Liverpool, a Man City, a top top team. So it's um, it's going to be difficult. But their area of strength are just physical. So we've got to match them the physicality. But then be brave when we're in possession. Can we just beat their press? Because they're good at doing that and be solid from set pieces. Be good in both boxes. 
Mm. Good in both boxes. Okay. A um, few more uh, comments coming in uh, about this game. Steve says, uh, I watched them before. I watched us on Saturday. It's going to be a tough game, uh, that. Uh, and Michael uh, is having a look at uh, the next six games. West Ham, Newcastle, Scum, uh, Burnley, West Brom, Spurs. Four of those winnable games, he's reckoning. Uh, so um, I'll sort of go along with that as well, I think, uh, at the next six. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd agree with that. And you you look at our, our last three, you know, Arsenal, Chelsea, Everton, and we took four points. I, I think that's really good. It's four points. You know, if, imagine if we would have drawn all three of them games, you'd be probably coming away saying, do you know what? Drawing against a Chelsea, drawing against an Arsenal, drawing against an Everton, not bad results really for a newly promoted team. And we would have only had three points out of them three games. So we've actually got four points out of the three games. It's I, th- I think we, I think you know that stands us in good stead. So if we can win you know a couple of these next fixtures and you know uh, i think some of them are win- winnable games so um yeah i think we can pick up some points definitely I, it's certainly against like you you know no disrespect but your burnley's and your west broms and so and and, so, and, and i think and i think saturday's a arguably winnable game even though they're good and they are very well organized um but you know anything can happen Anything can happen. Okay, score predictions then. West Ham. West Ham, what are you reckoning, Ryan? I'm going to go 2-1 Leeds. 2-1 Leeds. Benjamin? A good old-fashioned 1-0. Fashion 1-0. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Leeds is going to be back on it uh, this go. I'm going to go 16-0. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think they're going to score sixteen nil for this one uh, for me. Uh, so uh, overs on the goals. I'm thinking overs on the goals. Um, uh, that's about it uh, for LS11 uh, for this week. Unless there's anything else you boys want to add in before we close shop. Uh, no, of, of course I say it every week. Head over to our website to look at our writing page for the pre-match builds up, build up the post-match reports from from our writers. They're doing a brilliant job and. Again, like I say, every week it's free. There's no subscriptions. There's no pop-up ads. There's no clutter. It's just nice and simple to have a have a look at on your phone or or your your, your computer. It's www.ls11lufc.co.uk. Uh, nice and easy of course uh, make sure you use all of our sponsors toughshop.co.uk the workwear specialists you can get a 12 month subscription to The Athletic for £1 a month theathletic.com slash LS11 uh, ittechnologyuk.com for award winning affordable technology and uh, cast your over that 72 squad signed frame uh, from uh, footballprizes.co.uk just £3.95 a ticket uh, for them thanks very much for all your comments coming in on Facebook and YouTube, like, subscribe, five star reviews, and uh, we appreciate uh, you joining us uh, for this episode of LS11 podcast. Uh, ben, thanks very much. Speak to you again soon. Cheers, friends. <laughs> Cheers, friends. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much, Ryan. Cheers, Ryan. See you soon. See you later, Darren. Have a nice day. Have a nice week, guys. Yeah, have a nice week, and we'll catch you again next week. Ta ta. This is L.